Uh, I know it's early, but um, good morning, everybody. Great. Uh, welcome to our conference. Uh, we have, um, this being a university, we're going to have people coming and going all day long uh, amongst our 200 registrants, but uh, we do want to get started. So thank you for being here on time. Uh, our conference is called Water Cooperation and Conflict, the Local and Global Challenge. And uh, what I want to do now, right now to uh, start off the morning is bring up uh, our Dean of Dyson College Arts and Sciences, Nira Herman. Uh, she became the Dean at Pace University in 2004. The college has approximately 4,500 students as well as 250 full-time and more than 550 part-time faculty. Dyson offers more than 50 undergraduate and 14 graduate uh, major programs in the humanities, social sciences, mathematics, natural sciences, and the arts in the School of Performing Arts and Actors Studio Drama School. Uh, Dean Herman received her BA in mathematics from the University of California, Berkeley, her MS and PhD in statistics from Stanford University, and an MS in computer science from Rutgers University. She has created and taught numerous undergraduate and graduate courses in computer science, expert systems, database analysis, mathematical and applied statistics, biostatistics, epidemiology, and bioinformatics. Uh, and her, uh, uh, her, her amazing reserves of intelligent enthusiasm uh, keeps us all on our feet at, at Dyson College. So I'm, I'm happy to welcome uh, our dean and my dean, uh, Nira Herman. Thank you and good morning. Um, I'm um, pleased to welcome you to this uh, exciting conference. Uh, it's been quite a while in the making and we hope that uh, it will be very informative uh, for you and create a lot of connections uh, as we build a community around issues of uh, water. Uh, this is the third in a series of continuing conversations about resilience and what it means to our local and global communities that we have uh, sponsored at PACE. Through these conversations, uh, we have explored together how we can improve the interaction between the private and public sectors to enhance resilience and to strengthen partnerships during times of upheaval. Uh, as a dean, I really look forward to these types of conferences because they provide a lot of opportunities for our students and faculty to interact with experts of all sorts. As an academic institution, we're proud to continue this tradition of providing the setting where thought leaders have the opportunity to collaborate, share knowledge, bring new ideas forward, and develop potential solutions for the critical challenges we face. Uh, today's summit is devoted to discussing one of the looming crises of the century, the challenges and conflicts surrounding water issues in the new political climate. Water both divides and unites us, it defines boundaries and connects communities. As we humans drive an age of unprecedented planetary change, we must learn to manage this life-sustaining substance upon which nations, neighborhoods, and nature depend. Uh, we've convened distinguished experts and practitioners from the public, academic, and private sectors to discuss collaborate problem-solving strategies for the protection and sharing of water resources, ranging from transboundary conflicts to local water scarcity, to pollution, to watershed management, and inequitable distribution. Our goals for this third summit in resilience include developing long-term research and educational agendas for Dyson College and for Pace University related to water issues as they affect practice and policy, including at the global, national, and local levels that arise from drought, pollution, regional conflicts, and other challenges. We recently established the Dyson College Institute for Sustainability and the Environment, which is led by Senior Associate Dean Richard Schlesinger, and they are co-sponsoring this summit. And they're the ones that will be undertaking this water initiative that we're pulling together as an outcome of this conference and some of the activities tomorrow. So, this new initiative, we hope, will map out and implement a multi-year agenda for water education, research, and practice at PACE in partnership with many of the distinguished participants that are here today. So what will the day look like? 
This morning, we want to examine the role of water in human rights, international relations, urban resiliency, and the practical and political innovations needed to protect the future with Michael Berkowitz, the Managing Director at the Rockefeller Foundation and President of 100 Resilient Cities. We will discuss corporate responsibility, innovation, and the human right to water with John Friedman, Vice President of Global Partnerships and Policies at General Electric Water and Process Technologies. After lunch, we will be focusing on the national landscape and discussing, again, the human right to water, growing concerns over water-related conflicts around the world, and the challenges ahead under the new administration regarding water policy and climate change with Dr. Peter Glick, President Emeritus and Chief Scientist at the Pacific Institute. In our last panel discussion, will focus on water resilience projects that create ancillary benefits for local communities and address environmental justice challenges. After the conference, a collection of academic essays on water resilience and public-private partnerships will be published. These essays will be authored by Pace University faculty that represent the different schools within Pace, the Dyson College of Arts and Sciences, the Lubin School of Business, the Seidenberg School of Computer Science and Information Systems, the Law School, I'm sorry, the School of Education, and the Elizabeth Haupt School of Law. The perspectives that Pace faculty bring to these essays span the disciplines and underscore the complex nature of resiliency as it relates to the protection and sharing of water resources. Achieving resilience through public-private partnerships requires an understanding of the need for an interdisciplinary approach to address these complex problems. We're honored to facilitate and be part of these important continuing conversations that will help our communities become places of sustainable growth. In the spirit of the sustainability aspect of resilience, the forthcoming essay collection will be available online on Dyson College's website and the link will be shared with all of you in attendance today. So before we start the program, I just have a few housekeeping announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, please take a moment to put your cell phones on mute if you haven't done so already. Um, please know that the conference is being uh, videotaped by two students who are majors in Dyson College's Media and Communication and Visual Arts Department. Um, you'll see that on your program, on the handout card and on the screen, well, the former screen, um, that um, you can get onto the Wi-Fi as a paste-guest. Your username should be resilience283, and the password is lowercase y, capital K, 28 dollar sign. Um, okay, there it is. I, you will also see a link to a website that you can use to submit questions for one of our panelists. It's the www.pace.edu slash waterqs. Uh, also, we're using the hashtag uh, Pace Water Summit for um, uh, social media. And if you'd like to post comments uh, to the rest of the world, which apparently people love to do, I have yet to open my Twitter account, but I was told in the lobby by several people that I am totally out of touch by not doing that, so I will do that this, uh, this evening. And um, finally, um, if you would, at the end of the day, also log on to www.pace.edu slash summit survey to uh, give us your sense of uh, what you liked about the conference, what we can do to improve the next one, and um, any comments you have about uh, issues related to water. Um, before Beginning the program, I would also like to extend special thanks to the summit's planning committee members for the outstanding job they have done in organizing the conference. From the Dyson College Institute for Sustainability and the Environment, they are Executive Director Richard Schlesinger, Program Manager Sam Miller, and Senior Fellow for Environmental Affairs John Cronin. Uh, from Dyson College, uh, they are Assistant Dean and Summit Project Manager Angela Nally, Professor Michael Finewood, and Professor Joseph Ryan, who is the founder of PACE's uh, Resilient Summit series together with President Friedman. Uh, the series began in 2012, and we've been offering resilience conferences roughly every other year. Without the committee members' hard work and dedication, the summit would not have been po possible. And I also want to thank uh, the 
entire Dyson communications team who worked tirelessly to ensure that the conference runs smoothly, producing all of these different um, channels for you. Uh, they are Diane Way, Chris Snow, Ryan Milan, Stephanie Spallone, and Tonya Gentile. And you'll see them running around. Uh, if you have any questions, they will help you. Uh, we also have uh, some of Di Dyson's environmental studies and science student volunteers that are helping today, as well as um, I'd like to thank the president and provost offices and university relations, marketing and communications team for their critical support for the conference. So now I want to begin the actual program by introducing Stephen J. Friedman, who became the seventh president of Pace University in 2007. Um, President uh, Friedman uh, first served uh, three years uh, as dean of what is now the Elizabeth Haupt School of Law at Pace. He's a former senior partner and co-chair of the corporate department of Debevoise and Plimpton LLC. He was commissioner of the Securities and Exchange Commission, deputy assistant secretary for capital markets policy at the U.S. Treasury Department executive vice president and general counsel of the Equitable Companies Incorporated and E.F. Hutton Group Incorporated. He also was a U.S. Supreme Court law clerk for Justice William J. Brennan, Jr. Please join me in welcoming him. Thank you. Okay. As many of you are aware, President Friedman is stepping down as president of Pace University at the end of July. During his successful tenure as president, he's led Pace to new heights in more ways than we have time today to mention, but I will mention a few. He was the driving force behind the planning and implementation of the Pleasantville Master Plan that remade our Pleasantville campus. He has also worked tirelessly to create a New York City Master Plan with phase one of the work beginning this summer. With his guidance, PACE has expanded and modernized its student spaces, improved science labs and athletic facilities, and invested in a new state-of-the-art performing arts building, as well as resident halls across both campuses. Under his innovative leadership, PACE enrollment has increased, and so has our reputation as an institution of higher learning. A desire to make a difference in the lives of future generations through education has also steered him to organizations working to address issues facing all educators. He is currently a trustee on the Commission on Independent Colleges and Universities, a former member at large on the executive board of the Coalition of Urban and Metropolitan Universities, and a former trustee on the Commission of Cooperative Education, and former chairman and founder of the New York City Project. Today, everyone at Dyson College wants to thank President Friedman for his support of all of Dyson College's programs and of particular relevance today are environmental programs and sustainability initiatives, including being the, one of the initial people establishing our summits on resilience. Beginning with his first summit in 12, 2012, his support has extended to include the creation of the environmental sciences and, sorry, Environmental Studies and Science Department, as well as the Dyson College Institute for Sustainability and the Environment. Dyson's enrollment in undergraduate environmental program has grown substantially, and our new Master of Arts in Environmental Policy launched this fall with great success. As a token of our deep appreciation and gratitude, I'd like to present you with uh, a gift. Of water, you oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, and please accept our very best wishes as you embark in what I know will be uh, a, yet another career helping everybody to succeed. So, President Friedman. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you, Dean. In case anyone is wondering, this is a drop of water. Um, let me uh, join my welcome to, uh, to Dean Herman's welcome uh, to Pace University and welcome to our third summit on resilience. Um, this is going to be a fascinating day, I think, exchanging ideas on one of the most critical issues of the 21st century. 
It really would be hard to overstate the importance of water to the future of this planet and to the future of all of us who live on this planet. At this very moment, we're confronting different kinds of water crises virtually everywhere, from the growing deserts of sub-Saharan Africa, where severe water scarcity is threatening millions of people, to the oceans, where the opposite ha is happening, thermal expansion, melting of the Arctic and Antarctic ice sheets are raising sea levels to a dangerous level. And island nations are literally uh, in danger of disappearing. To some of our most populous countries, like Bangladesh, where 60% of the population does not have access to safe drinking water, arsenic is very close to the surface. Uh, in Bangladesh, and to hometown cities like Flint, Michigan, where residents have not had safe drinking water since 2014, and the lead pipe distribution system that causes the problem isn't scheduled to be replaced until 2020 at the earliest. Water-related crises are massive and daunting, but uh, as president of a university, I'm optimistic about uh, the generation we are training's ability to deal with this challenge. Every day at Pace, we prepare bright, committed students, the aspiring heart of America, with a powerful combination of, uh, of liberal learning, of professional preparation, and of real-world experience. When it comes to water, Undergraduates throughout the whole university are focusing on this issue from every angle. Uh, environmental science and technology, advocacy and policy, health and security, management and ethics. Our Elizabeth Haub School of Law is literally a world leader in environmental law and regulation and those students are being trained to uh, implement effective regulatory systems both locally and globally. Because of that, it is a special pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker today, Mr. Michael Berkowitz. As Dean Herman said, he is a managing director of the Rockefeller Foundation and is president of its 100 Brazilian cities uh, initiative. I've heard Mr. Berkowitz talk about this before, and um, you are in for a very thought-provoking and fascinating discussion. He understands firsthand the uh, importance of preparation and preparedness and planning as Deputy Commissioner in the Office of Emergency Management here in New York City. He worked on many major planning initiatives including all of the things that give New Yorkers nightmares, coastal storms, biological terrorism, and transit strike contingency plans. After that, he held several important positions at Deutsche Bank, including uh, Deputy Global Head of Operational Risk Management, and now at Rockefeller, he and his team are helping cities all around the world become more resilient in dealing with the physical, social, economic, and environmental challenges of the 21st century. So I wish you all a very interesting and productive day. Please join me in welcoming Michael Berkowitz. Thank you for such a great.